know, one of my favorite stories that came out of uh, that period when we first started the community garden was a story of a mom who wanted to really get her two daughters uh, with their hands in the dirt, figuring out what it was like to work in a garden. And one day when they were driving the car and she was proposing this idea to her daughters, she looked at the oldest one sitting in the car seat in the back and said, so tell me, do you know where squash comes from? And the little girl looks back at her and she's got this sort of confused, frustrated look on her face, her brows all furrowed, and she replies, of course I do. It comes from the Harris Teeter. I mean, doesn't everybody know that squash comes from the Harris Teeter? The fact of the matter is that we know squash has to grow, but a lot of times we don't think about the growth. We just think about the finished product. You know, we as people are a lot like squash. When squash grows, some of it just happens naturally. I mean, photosynthesis just happens. But there's a lot of things we have to make sure that squash has to grow. It's gotta have good water, it's gotta have nutrient-rich soil, we gotta make sure it's getting enough sunlight. And these are things we have to make sure the squash is actually getting if it's gonna grow up well. And people are the same way. I mean, that's why you make your kids drink milk, so that they'll have strong bones. That's why you torture your kids to eat their vegetables, because you know they need the nutrients from the leafy greens. Now, you can't stop your kid from growing. Part of it just happens. But there's a lot of things we have to make sure that we're getting into our bodies to help us grow. The same is true for us, spiritually speaking, when we talk about growing into disciples. Some of it just happens. God just makes it happen. But some of it is by what we put in. Now, when we look at the example of Jesus calling his early disciples, when he first began to form that group of 12, that group of 13 that was gonna walk with him, they were disciples. Their job was to follow him around everywhere he went and learn to grow up to be like him. They watched him pray, they watched him heal, they listened to him teach, they watched how he interacted with other people so that they could become like Jesus. I mean, that really is what a disciple is. A disciple's job is to be like the rabbi. Not only to know what the rabbi knows or to do what the rabbi does, but to literally be like the rabbi. And these 12, even after Jesus died, was resurrected, and then ascended into heaven, they were so much like Jesus that people began to give them the name Christians, little Christs. They looked so much like Jesus that people, they knew that that was, that was their rabbi. So when we talk about ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ, that's all we're saying. In fact, Paul, in the um, Ephesians, a letter that he wrote to a group of people, part of the early church, he said, God has given us all gifts. God has given us what we need so that we can all together, individually and collectively, grow into the full stature of Jesus Christ. We can grow up to be like our rabbi, like Jesus. So what I'm about to tell you is not an infomercial, I'm not giving you the four easy steps to making sure that you're full, uh, growing into the full stature of Jesus Christ. But we believe that there are, scripturally speaking, four basic constitutive parts. Think about them as food groups. Think about them almost as a food pyramid. When we eat a healthy, full, balanced diet, we grow well. We grow intentionally. So we talk about being focused on God. And by that, I mean living a disciplined life. That's a life of prayer, where we're praying regularly. It's a life of daily devotion, where we're reading scripture in a devotional way on a regular basis. We're generous people, we're giving, we're connected. So that's focused on God. We also have to be unified in community. Christianity is never something that we can do on our own. Church is never something that's just us. It's always a, a collective thing, a, an authentic community that we're a part of. A group of people that really know the true us, and we really know the true them. We can support each other and look after each other on this journey together as we grow up. There's learning the word. You know, God gave us the Bible as an opportunity for us to know who he was, to know his heart, to know his passion for us, to know how he desired for us to be. So when we learn from scripture, we are learning from our master, we're learning from our rabbi. And then finally, living by serving and sharing. When we live by serving and sharing, we, we live by returning the blessings that God has given to us. We live by serving other people that we know. We also live by sharing these beautiful stories that God has given us of growth in our own life. And those are basically the four food groups, focused on God, unified in community, learning the word, and living by serving and sharing. And together they spell full. So that's what we mean when we talk about growing into the full stature of Jesus Christ. I had a, a family that ended up in my office one day and uh, they had made the decision to return to church, to come back, to, to give it a go one more time. And they were frustrated. They were frustrated that they were there, but they were not growing. Almost like 
they showed up at the Harris Teeter and expected squash. You know, some of the way we grow just happens. But a lot of what we do is very intentional. And this is an opportunity for us to be intentional as together we grow into the full stature of Jesus Christ.